tonight. From Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Ago, this building was shaking as the Carolina Panthers emerged from the tunnel here in Charlotte. They are ready to go as the Panthers are set to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. The kicker stands ready, and off we go from Uptown Charlotte. Now K.J. Osborne, and he won't quite make it to the 25. Under center for the Vikings, out comes the former Michigan State Spartan and longtime veteran Kirk Cousins. Leadership skills apparent early in his life, carried over not just in high school but in college where he was a three-time captain of the Michigan State Spartans and learned the art of the comeback early in his career there and actually capped off his career with a big comeback in a bowl game before going off to the NFL. <laughs> On first and 10, Cousins. Complete to open things up. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And that'll bring up second down. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make it third and 13. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line. But I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels. Because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. <laughs> Working out of the gun, Cousins. And that will be incomplete. And some applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. It's fourth down. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on the punt. Back deep, the dangerous Farrell Cooper. Turn, and the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. Now here comes Teddy Bridgewater, first round pick back in 2014 as he looks to command this Panther offense. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him <laughs> along the way. 
And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy who springs for the good stuff. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Bridgewater gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Here's Bridgewater. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bring up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football, got to him, and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he'll go down after losing yardage at the 10. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Second and 13, Cousins. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. And it's third down. Love the idea, love the concept, but you gotta leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and that will come the offense as they take over. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet. 
and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Bridgewater and the Panthers going to come up here first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. To the right side and complete to Thomas. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. From the gun, Bridgewater. Stiff-armed him. Got his target, Samuel. And he is going to have the Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. With a connection there, Bridgewater to Samuel for a Panther first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll throw again, Bridgewater. Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. And brought down the night before they're inside the 25. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. A gain of six there on first. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. On second down, McCaffrey. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. Six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, Paul. They run the game up and out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. First and goal. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. 
They'll try to throw here now. Bridgewater. Touchdown. And the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. They find themselves open for an easy touchdown. for two. They'll kick the point after. And this will be good to give the Panthers a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And Carolina scores to cap it off. as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. It's been an awfully slow start for them. This is their third possession. They don't have a first down yet. So that means they have to change up what they're doing, and for some teams, it's a change in tempo, usually moving it to more up-tempo type of an offense just to try and change their fortunes right now. What they've been doing so far isn't working. Maybe they'll do that. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 23. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. And sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he gets lost in there and he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Now Cook. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Of Darius Taylor on the tackle. Boy, Dalvin Cook is so explosive in the open field. He's not a small guy either, but once he gets those legs churning, look out. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He can see the play developing right in front of him. And once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, he's just going to keep right on going. And if you're looking for proof of his speed, Next Gen stat shows that he was traveling just over 21 miles an hour there. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Another incompletion there. That's five in a row now to start this game. He's got to take a deep breath now, step back, shake it off a little bit, trust his offensive line, and hope that his play caller dials up something that can give him a completion and get him going. Here's second and ten now from the 35. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still ten to go on third down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. And it looks 
like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Draw play. Cousins to Cook. He'll be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. So Cousins heads to the Viking sideline, and on is Dan Bailey to try the field goal. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. And the, the Carolina offense about ready to go. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Bridgewater going to lead the Panthers up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. He'll go in at near midfield at the 49. It's a pickup of 17 on the first down. He's a big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Throw for Bridgewater. There again is Thomas. They've gone to the lock. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Seven yards, the pick up there. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Bridgewater gets his complete to Samuel. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. First down, this is McCaffrey. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. 
because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Bridgewater going to give this to McCaffrey. Down to the 25. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. The Panthers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. To throw is Bridgewater. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Joey Sly on now for the Panthers. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. And his kick is good. They push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. Chalk that down as an eight-play drive capture the field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. To the made field goal. Here's Sly to kick this one away. And that's fielded on the back line of the end zone. And this will come out to the 25 as Osborne elects not to return it. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They start the drive with Cook. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You put a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. From the gun, here's Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. The Vikings on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant.
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. First down, here's the run with Cook. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now Cook, he's got it off the draw. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Here's Brenton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Christian McCaffrey and the Panthers about set to go on offense. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Bridgewater and the Panthers going to come up here first and 10 at the 20. And they'll run the option to start the drive. Now he's hit, and Bridgewater loses the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. This is a huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> And this is one of those bang-bang plays, Charles. Did the knee hit first, or did the ball come out first? This is where you need that 20-20 eyesight, don't you, Brandon? You've got to see which one happened first. If the knee hit the ground, then they will keep possession. Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it, but you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it, and that's what you don't want to do. Third and six. The Panthers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Bridgewater to throw it. And he's got his target. That's more. And they nearly get 
this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. and they're taking advantage of it. On first and ten, Bridgewater. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Bridgewater. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. DJ Wadham. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop it. And we saw it all the time. Have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. So Bridgewater needing to work a little magic after that sack on a third and long. Here's Bridgewater. And he's going to go down again. Seven. I remember when I was a kid, I was running, it was a nickel, so I could get that soda down to the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper price. Okay, how much were they, a dime? <laughs> what were they? About 15 cents. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 18. They'll look to throw right away. And that's taken in. It's B.C. Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big play on the catch and run, covering 34 yards. That was awfully nice. Hit him in stride, and off he went. It was almost like the ball hitting him was like him receiving a baton, and he was running the anchor leg in a relay race. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. And he's got some space here, the 20. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. A big play on the ground there. It goes for 36 yards. This has been a good drive so far. It's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. 
Cook. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Earlier this half, you were wondering how they were going to defend him. I think you used the term bottle him up at different levels. They've struggled to do that. They certainly have because when you see them approach, in order to bottle him up at different levels, that front line's got to take care of business. Otherwise, he starts to sip through. Coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of his first half of action. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. They head to the line, facing a third and seven, following the incompletion on second down. Play fake, Cousins. Strong coverage by Carroll. That was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, on third down. They said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that'll bring them back within four. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And with a marker down, he's up just past the 25-yard line, but I think they're going to be going backwards. Let's check the call. Hey, baby, this ain't good enough for us. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. With that field position after the return wasn't terrific, it's not a great starting field position as well. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Throwing, Bridgewater. And incomplete on the yeah, deep ball. Yeah, we got it. Thus far, they have been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Bridgewater. Complete on the quick throw to Moore. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10. Touchdown. Strike quickly here for six points. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they designed every play to score. I don't know how true that is, but he had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling you that, he was designing run after catch in every play. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way to put it in there, and that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. Sly on for the extra point. It's good, and now it's an 11 point lead, 17 to 6. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two play drive that time.
Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And that's fielded on the back line of the end zone. And this will come out to the 25 as Osborne elects not to return it. And you see Dalvin Cook and the offense heading back out. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? A first down throw for Cousins. And that is incomplete. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there and drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. again making his presence felt early in this one first half already over the century mark how about the yards per completion too that's a pretty darn good number there number of catches but he's shredding defense is getting big yardage with each and every one of them The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down. It's caught inside the 25. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. Kick slam, caught by Moore. And the Panthers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. And between the last two plays, they've moved it over half the length of the football field. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker. And you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? Ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. From the gun, Bridgewater. He's got it for the touchdown. Bobby on the touchdown pass from Teddy Bridgewater. And the Panthers, they widen their lead. Well, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Slide for the PAT. And the lead is up to 18 now. 
scoring summary. Three play drive. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Fly now to kick off after the touchdown. And this carries into the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Cousins. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. The throw is Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he is finally out of bounds, but not before taking it down inside the 30. A big play there just before halftime. 41 yards. Still all sorts of time left in this game, and he would be able to say take it one play at a time. But the truth is, they're probably going to have to hit on a few big plays in the passing game to close this gap, and that's a good start right there. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Cousins to throw it. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They'll throw again. Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen. Complete. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. To the air again, it's Cousins. This is caught. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half from our quarterback. His three touchdown passes have his guys out in front as we hand things back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
to kick this one away. Takes this about five yards deep. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They are clicking on all cylinders. They seem to be just scoring at will right now, and that's why they've opened up this big lead. Now we always talk about getting into the zone, and all athletes are seeking that, aren't they? Where everything is working for them, every move they make works, it clicks, and they are on point right now. Yeah, they are in that zone that you're talking about. Bridgewater going to lead the Panthers up here first and 10 at their own 25 yard line and he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey and he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27 in the first half he was held in check on the ground but despite that lack of production they still have the lead and they've got to feel fortunate about that if they could actually get production from their lead horse that would help open up this offense and widen this margin too they'll break the huddle come up on second and eight at the 27 yard line they stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. He can run for it, and he will. Coming open downfield, he keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. When they watch film of this game and hand out the great sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And ostensibly, they could go right back to it because there are multiple options on this play. Hand it inside, quarterback tucks it and keeps it, quarterback throws the ball downfield. You should be able to react to the defense and have an option available on every snap. And just a yard to go here on second down. They'll try to throw here now, Bridgewater. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Heavy set out there on third and one. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. They're going to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Also, damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. to the ground on first. It's McCaffrey. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right in a yard. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. A throw out wide to Anderson. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31 yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. A 
line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. The last run got six, now second and four. To throw is Bridgewater. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 12-yard line. That's good for a kick out of first Bridgewater to Moore. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. This is McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And that will get them halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. The former Gamecock here, this is Mike Davis. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the run. Just a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up for the first and goal. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. On the ground, McCaffrey into a mass of bodies, and I think they held him out. They did. No game on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Another shot from the one on second and goal. And it'll be caught in the end zone for the Carolina touchdown on D.J. Moore. D.J. Moore, his second touchdown of the night, and the Panthers add on to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Now Joey Sly for the point after. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. That drive a long one, spanning 15 plays. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Here's Osborne. 
And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, <laughs> wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. The drive starts with a completion. Left side. Three yards the game there. Second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays. Run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. That first down completion only netted them three. Second and seven. Now a run with Cook. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 12 yards there and a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, OK, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. On second down, it's Cook. Some tough running, but it only gets him to the 45. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. But he finds Cook. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long, but a nice throw there for a good gain and a first down. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. On first down, Cook. Oh, that's just not fair, and now room to run. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Play action now, Cousins. Smith catches left side. He's going to be out of bounds on what's going to wind up being the final play of quarter number three. And we're back now in Charlotte. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. From 
from the shotgun. It's Cousins. On the crossing route, complete. That's Johnson. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense. Find the holes where guys are available. Put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. What we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. On second and seven, Cousins to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He had to absorb another little bump there from the defense, another incomplete pass. We've seen a lot of that tonight. They've come after him all night long. Nothing but pressure in his face. He's trying to stand up there and make throws. It's hard enough to do when the pocket is clear. When you got all those people in front of you, almost impossible to have a good completion percentage. The Vikings on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Cousins. And it is incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. Fourth and goal, and they found a way to throw it in the end zone for a touchdown. And these defenses, they just like three downs, get off the field. But here they had to go four, couldn't get it done. A lot of the time, you're looking up and saying, okay, if I hold it for three, at worst, I give up a field goal attempt. When they go for it, sometimes it really affects the defense because maybe they're not mentally prepared to go that fourth down. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. He's got it, and that'll make the score 31-13. to 13. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Kick it away after the touchdown. From the six. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Panthers take over first and 10 at their own 24 yard. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. All of a sudden, they have quite a bit of breathing room. This was a one score game, but touchdowns on their last two drives, and now comfort is here so to speak <laughs> it certainly is for them now, i've been in this situation before on the flip side of this and all that's going on there is a little bit of finger pointing hey what's going on how can we stop them can someone make a play to try and stop this momentum well they're going to be ball hawking because they need a turnover on that other side they start on the ground with mccaffrey and he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. On the tackle defensively, Jaleel Johnson. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. Get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
15 yards on the play, first down. No doubt shows you the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches have had a reliable running game. They breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point in the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Bridgewater able to get this to Thomas, his tight end. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A gain of 13, it's a first down. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 33. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines. And let's Look at this, middle of the field. Christian McCaffrey, 33 yards, and the Panthers are able to grow their lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run, and one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt, you need that difference maker lugging the rock. Fly on for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. Slide out a kick off after the touchdown. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And this will come out to the 25 as Osborne elects not to return it. The Vikings head out to take over once again. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Going to let it fly for Rudolph. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Justin Bowles. And he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Another solid game-changing play for this defense for the interception. At this point, though, I don't know that it's game-changing. I mean, they've got this one in firm control. And you always hear about 
you know, those stories about someone left their game plan behind and maybe you benefit from it. I'm not going to say that that happened, but they certainly have appeared on defense to be a step ahead this entire game. Guys are always in the right spot in order to make a play. The offense has had its moments, too. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. Making the stop there, Daniil Hunter. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. On the ground, McCaffrey. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Panthers on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and seven. And it'll be touched down here, but not before he does pick up the first. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. You have confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take look like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. On first down, this is McCaffrey. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. On second down, McCaffrey. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. Just got to be patient. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Bridgewater going to give this to McCaffrey. And for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere as they bury him behind the line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they got a little bit of a win there, but let's face it, the vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and the big yardage all night long. Behind the chain, second and 12. McCaffrey on the counter. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but now from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Here's McCaffrey. 
And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. And well, they could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. So this one is over, a victory for Carolina. And when you break it down, you know, this was just a thoroughly dominating performance. And I truly thought that we'd have a tight game coming into this one. I think you felt the same way yep. based on our conversation after the production meeting, but obviously not the case. And how about just how it broke open? You know, you just all of a sudden, whoosh, there it is. This thing is pretty much done. And the crowd stayed with it to celebrate because they're like, let's enjoy watching our team play this well. This is fun. For Charles Davis and all our crew, I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Panthers are winners here as we say so long from Charlotte.